so this is the next question 6a okay that is analyze the response curve obtained for the mechanical system shown that we should find the values of m k and b respectively okay so here is the mechanical system given simple mechanical system given okay where all the m b k are connected uh, in a series okay and also they mentioned the value of force f of t is equal to 2 n okay where n is the constant okay it uh, 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 lies from 1 to infinity okay where n is the constant number so that's why and here they have given one plot here where they have mentioned the values of 2 okay that 2 is the where this point is meeting here this is called as the peak time right tp okay that tp is equal to 2 they have mentioned and here the settling time that is a 2 or for steady state error uh, steady state error the, it would be reaching the steady state at uh, 2 seconds so that's why ESS is equal to 2 here and also 2.3 they have given the uh, where the peak time touches uh, in the uh, uh, displacement part it is touching in the 2.3 part that is the output response is given as a C of T it is 2.3 they have given it okay so here first what we need to be doing is we know that F of T uh, just write the general equilibrium equation for this mechanical system that is m d square x of t by dt square plus b dx of t by dt plus k into x of t then what we should be doing taking the Laplace transform for this equation so this t domain would be converted into s domain so f of s is equal to m s square since we have d square by dt square double derived double derivation so it would be s square into x of t would be replaced by x of s so b s into x of s plus k into x of s so here x of s is common take it outside f of s is equal to ms square plus bs plus k into x of s now the transfer function we can take it as x of s divided by f of s okay that is x of s divided by f, f of s we would be getting it as 1 divided by ms square plus bs plus k so the, for this you should be uh, converting into the form of this form where we can in, impute the values of zeta and omega n that is uh, x of s by f of s rewrite it as 1 by m divided by s square plus b by m into s plus k by m where if we compare it with the general form that is omega omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so here we can see that in place of omega n square we have k by m okay so omega n is equal to square root of k by m okay if we compare it this is the value of omega n square right that is in place of omega n square we have k by m you should be always taking the characteristic equations denominator right yeah so that's why uh, omega n square in place of omega n square it is k by m so therefore omega n would be square root of k by m okay so this is one relation we got here for omega n is equal to square root of k by m this we, we would be using it later okay so now what we would be getting for zeta in place of 2 zeta omega n s we can see that the coefficient of s here is uh, 2 zeta omega n right so 2 zeta omega n is equal to b by m in place of uh, coefficient of s we have b by m so zeta is equal to b by m divided by 2 omega n that is uh, b, uh, b by m divided by 2 into square root of k by m so in order to cancel this m term here what you are doing is b by m i am writing it as square root of b by m into square root of b by m into this when it goes to the numerator side it would be 1 by 2 into square root of m by k okay reciprocal it would be reciprocal so that we can cancel this m out here so therefore our zeta value we are getting it as square root of b into square root of b is b divided by 2 into square root of k m okay so that's why 2 square root of k m. so this is the one more relation we got when we equate zeta that is b b divided by 2 into square root of k m okay so now one by one let's find the values of m b and k first thing what we should do in this they have given the input f of t is equal to 2 n okay so now com compute uh, convert this time domain into the s domain okay that is f of s is equal to 2 into 1 by s okay we should be taking the laplace transform since i have uh, assumed the value of uh, so here the laplace transform of n it we know that it is 1 by s okay so that's why it is 2 into 1 by s so f of s is equal to 2 by s okay so now equation 1 we have taken the transfer function equation right that is x of s divided by f of s okay so bring this f of s to this side so that's why x of s would be equal to 2 by s into 1 by m divided by s square plus b by m s plus k by m okay so rewrite this equation like this and also from the graph i mentioned you right that is the steady state error ess they have given it as equal to 2 so therefore ess is equal to limit s tending to 0 s into x of s we have one formula right where they have given the value of uh, ess is equal to 2 steady state error formula 
okay this is the formula for steady state error and we s into the transfer function we should be multiplying it okay that is that is in this case it is x of s so that's why 2 is equal to limit s tending to 0 s so here in the numerator side multiply s so 2s divided by s in the numerator already we have it in the denominator uh, into 1 by m divided by s square plus b by m s plus k by m so you can cancel this s out here so 2 is equal to 2 by m 2 into 1 by m is 2 by m apply the limits that is s tending to 0 so s square so this would be 0 this here we have one s so 0 into anything is 0 so here we are uh, left with only k by m so that's why 2 by m divided by k by m so we can cancel m out here so if we uh, compute the value of k that is equal to 2 by 2 so therefore from this relationship we would be getting the value of k as k equal to 1 so one quantity we have found out that is k similarly let's uh, try to find out uh, b and m okay for that we should be using one more relation that is from the graph we know that the peak time tp it that's its formula is pi divided by omega d that is given as two seconds okay now we should be computing the value of mp that is peak overshoot we know that what is peak overshoot this is peak overshoot right so the value of this how we can get is this whole thing that is 2.3 minus 2 if we do 2.3 minus 2 we would be getting this uh, as our answer okay so that's why but so this is our peak overshoot mp okay so that's why it should, we should be doing it 2.3 minus 2 that is equal to 0 0.3 or we can write it as peak overshoot is 30 percent and also we have one formula for peak overshoot that is mp is equal to e to the power minus pi zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square mp we have got it as 0 0.3 that is equal to the same formula so in order to remove this exponential that is e power okay so that's why i have taken it uh, a lan on anti lan on both sides so that's why lan and e would be are uh, inversely proportional to each other so they are they would be getting cancelled out so that's why lan of 0 0.3 is equal to minus pi zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square so lan of 0 0.3 if you put in the calculator you would be getting minus 1.203 Okay, so again to remove this square root, I am taking a square on both sides. So that's why minus 1.2033 whole square is equal to minus pi the whole square that is equal to pi square zeta square divided by square root and square would be getting cancelled. So we would be left with only minus 1 by zeta square. So I have taken this minus 1 by zeta square to other side. So minus 1.203 the whole square we are getting it as 1.447 into 1 minus zeta square is equal to pi square zeta square so i am multiplying this 1.447 with 1 and zeta square i have written it and pi square that is 3.14 the whole square that we are getting it as 9.86 zeta square so 1.447 is equal to 9.86 zeta square so if um, this minus 1.447 zeta square if you go it to the other side it will be plus 1.447 again zeta square is common so i have taken it outside here so 9.86 plus 1.447 we are getting it as 11.307 so zeta square is equal to 1.447 divided by 11.307 you would be getting approximately as 0.128 it's a square root to compute the value of zeta we would be getting it as 0.357 now again apply the relation tp is equal to pi by omega d that is tp is equal to pi by omega d we know that it is omega n divided omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square so we know the value of tp uh, uh, omega sorry d, uh, zeta square so let's compute the value of omega n so that's why so multiply this uh, tp is 2 so 2 omega n into square root of 1 minus 0.357 square that is zeta and that is equal to pi that is 3.14 so omega n would be 3.14 divided by 2 into square root of 1 minus 0.357 square so if we compute this this is the value of omega n which we get that is 1.68 radian per second okay so now using this value of omega n we already we already wrote the relationship of omega n at the start that is omega n is equal to square root of k by m so again take square on both sides that is omega n square is equal to k by m so omega n square just now we have got it as 1.68 it's a square is equal to k we have already got it as 1 so k is equal to 1 by m so m is equal to 1 divided by 1.68 square is 2.82 so if we compute this this is the value of m we get that is 0.354 okay similarly for zeta also we have a uh, uh, derive the relation that is that is equal to b divided by 2 square root of km zeta also we have computed that is 0.357 is equal to b divided by 2 into square root of k value is 1 and m value is 0.354 substitute that and compute for the value of b if we compute it this is the value we get that is 0.424 so in this way we have found the values of m b k respectively okay so this is one simple problem hope you understood this problem very well
So this is the next question here. The question is, did we need to determine the value of k for a control system with open loop transfer function they have given it as k into s plus 5 divided by s into s plus 2 into s plus 10 which produces 30% of steady state error with unit ramp input okay so this is a bit tricky problem yet very important problem okay so yeah what we need to do is first uh, thing is in these kind of uh, problems first write the given data okay in order to avoid confusion write the given data since they have given the open transfer function write that first k into s plus 5 divided by s into s plus 2 into s plus 10 so what and all are given 30 percent of steady state error is given okay 30 percent means ess is equal to 30 percent okay so after uh, in order to convert percentage into number we know that we need to divide it by 100 so our uh, steady state error we are getting it as 0 0.3 okay this is the steady state error which we are getting okay and also from this uh, equation try to simplify this uh, reduce it to the general form first okay that is k into so take this phi outside so this would be phi k into 1 plus s by 5 right divided by 2 and 10 you should take outside so it would be 2 tens are 20 s into 1 plus s by 2 into 1 plus s by 10, right so 5 1s are 5 4s are so our final g of s into h of s is equal to k into 1 plus s by 5 divided by 4s into 1 plus s by 2 into 1 plus s by 10 right so here your first try to find out the types uh, which type of system it is okay first of all why because uh, in the other data they have given it as 30 percent of steady state error with unit ramp input okay they have mentioned it as unit ramp input okay so in order to find out the value of k and the data given is steady state error along with that we need to be having either kp kv or ke right but uh, in order to decide whether we need to be taking kp kv or kv first you need to be checking which type of system it is so the c here the power of s s to the power j right so in, in the place of j what is there one right s to the power one so the system here is type one system okay so since the system is type one we need to be taking the velocity error coefficient kv right in case of type one system and also the unit uh, the signal given is unit ramp input so since it is ramp the uh, k we need to be considering the value of kv and also the steady state error we need to be writing it as a by kv okay since the it is of type 1 system so we need to be writing a by kv so now we need to be write as write the, write the value of kv okay write the formula for kv that is limit s tending to 0 s into g of s into h of s okay so kv is equal to limit s tending to 0 sk into 1 plus s by 5 divided by 4s into 1 plus s by 2 into 1 plus s by 10 okay so here we can cancel s and s so the remaining kv is equal to limit s 10 to 0 k into 1 plus s by 5 divided by 4 into 1 plus s by 2 1 plus s by 10 so kv is equal to substitute the limit that is k into 1 plus 0 by 5 is 0 4 into 1 plus 0 1 plus 0 that's equal to k divided by 4 so our final value of kv which we are getting is k by 4 okay so now nothing much to do the given data they have given the steady state error we have found the value of kv so now apply the formula ess is equal to a by kv okay 
they have given uh, uh, kv they have given steady state error they have given and the value of a is mentioned in the question only right if you observe carefully unit ramp input so the value of a is equal to 1 since it's a unit ramp input so ess is equal to 1 by kv okay so ess is 0.3 is equal to 1 divided by k by 4 so that would be 0.3 is equal to Four by k, so 0 0.3 multiply this k to other side. K is equal to four, so k is equal to four divided by 0 0.3. Okay, so after simplification, the value we are getting it is 13.33. So in this way, we need to be finding the value of k in this solution. Okay, so please observe the problem very carefully. This is a very important problem. So analyze the steps very carefully and uh, try to solve this. Okay, so that's all for this session. So the next type of controller is uh, proportional plus derivative controllers. Okay, yeah. So the series combination of proportional and derivative control modes gives proportional plus derivative control modes. The mathematical expression for PD composite control is given as P of T is equal to KP into E of, uh, e of T plus KP into KD into D E of T by DT plus P0. Okay, now taking the Laplace transform, we are going to get this uh, term here okay then this is the simple block here then the addition of a derivative mode to a proportional controller modifies its uh, response to outputs okay then a pd controller provides an element to the response which is largest when the rate of change of error is greatest and uh, diminishes as it becomes smaller so this pd controller you can also say that uh, it elements to the response which is largest when the rate of change of error is greatest okay whenever the error uh, change or the DE of T by DT uh, the rate of change of error is greatest okay the PD controller provides an element to the response that is it diminishes at it as it becomes smaller so whenever there is a large amount of error the PD controller provides uh, the PD controller uh, controlling strength would be becoming smaller okay so this is the thing then the derivative mode is never used alone because it is not capable of maintaining a control signal okay so in this case when uh, the derivative mode is never used alone so that's why it is it is proportional plus derivative these two work together uh, in us in the same time whenever the error is occurred it is always with the proportional mode and often additionally used in the other controllers okay